your voice, your vote. And that escalating feud between Donald Trump and Jeb Bush. Trump hit Bush again yesterday, this time for speaking Spanish on the campaign trail. And Bush is standing by live to respond. First, let's get the latest from John Carl. And John, another big headline breaking overnight on that Hillary Clinton email controversy. George, the staffer, the Clinton staffer who set up the private email server at Hillary Clinton's home in Chappaqua, New York, is taking the fifth. He was subpoenaed to testify before the House Benghazi Committee. The Clinton campaign says they encouraged him to testify, but he has decided to take the fifth not to testify. The campaign says he simply didn't want to be drawn into a political spectacle. You do have two other top Clinton aides who will be testifying in the next two days. George, the other big story, though, is that escalating and increasingly personal war of words between Jeb Bush and Donald Trump. After Jeb Bush's bilingual blitz on Donald Trump. I mean, this is not a guy who is a conservative. No es conservador. The Donald is now slamming Bush for speaking Spanish, telling the conservative website Breitbart.com, quote, he's a nice man, but he should really set the example by speaking English while in the United States. Yo soy orgullosamente eh, casado con una mexicana americana. Mis hijos son hispanos. On the campaign trail, Bush often breaks into Spanish, the native language of his wife, Colomba, and about 37 million other Americans. But Trump's rhetoric against illegal immigration has helped rocket him to the top of the polls knocking Bush from his once frontrunner status. Trump is crushing Bush both nationally and in Iowa, the state that votes first. Bush is now fighting back with a video hitting cases, Trump on his past back. positions. In many cases, I probably identify more as a Democrat. Trump told George he's not worried. He's doing very poorly in the polls. He's a very low energy kind of guy, and he had to do something, so they're spending a lot of money on ads. Jeb Bush's campaign manager, Danny Diaz, hit back at Trump hard on Twitter, tweeting, quote, Donald Trump against Spanish? Says Reagan, not a conservative? Looks like a one-man mission to kill the GOP. And that is the view from Bush headquarters. Well, let's hear from the man himself right now. Thank you, John. Jeb Bush joins us now from Manchester, New Hampshire. Governor Bush, thanks for joining us this morning. We just showed that tweet from your campaign manager. Is that what you think, that Donald Trump is a one-man mission to kill the GOP? I think I think Donald Trump is uh, trying to insult his way to the presidency. and It's not going to work. People want an uplifting, hopeful message. People come to this country to pursue their dreams. Sometimes they start without speaking English, but they they learn English and they add vitality to our to our country. And um, the fact that he would say you only can speak English is kind of ridiculous. If you think about it, are we going to close all the foreign language classes? Is he why would he have uh, a contract with Univision for his beauty pageant? I mean, this is a diverse country. We should we should celebrate that diversity and embrace a set of shared values. And Mr. Trump doesn't believe in those shared values. He wants to tear us down. He doesn't believe in tolerance. He doesn't believe in the things that have created the greatness of this country. You know, this is also personal for you. Of course, your wife, Columba, uh, comes from Mexico. What was your first thought when you heard him criticize you for speaking Spanish? <laughs> I laughed. I mean, this is a joke. I was in a, in, a, in, a, uh, in a press gaggle where people asked me a question in Spanish, and I answered it in Spanish. Um, I was in a classroom yes, two days ago, La Progresiva High School, where these young, beautiful kids all speak English, but they also speak Spanish. And one of them asked me a, a question in Spanish. I answered it. That's the reality of America. That's the goodness of America. That's the kind of America we want. So part of it is you you'd laugh because it's so bizarre, but it's hurtful for a lot of people. And Mr. Trump knows this. He's appealing to people's angst and their fears rather than their higher hopes. Well, you, he's also called you low energy, a stiff, says you're a joke on immigration. The last thing we need is another Bush. Why do you think he's out to get you? I think he's out to get everybody. He, he doesn't have a set of plans. If he had to actually do the traditional thing, which is here's my policy as it relates to immigration, his policy is, is uh, not serious. It would cost hundreds of billions of dollars. It's probably unconstitutional. It violates civil liberties. If he had to actually debate the points on taxes and regulation, people would be surprised that he is, he is a, uh, a liberal in many of these views. The, the express views he has on taxes, on health care, are, are views that are more closely similar to those of Hillary Clinton. You know, the, the chairman of the RNC, Reince Priebus, is now circulating a loyalty pledge among all the candidates. Uh, Mr. Trump told me yesterday he'd support you over Hillary Clinton if you get the nomination. Would you support him? <laughs> yeah, I would, of course. Of course nope, I would. We need to be unified. We, we, need to, we need to win. 
And um, I think I think Mr. Trump is ought to figure out a way to maybe to lessen the the divisive language, the hurtful language, and talk about the aspirations of the American people rather than trying to prey on their fears. There is that Hillary Clinton headline this morning as well. One of her staffers taking the fifth after being subpoenaed to the House committee. What do you make of that? She hasn't been truthful. Um, she has had a private server hidden from the Obama administration against their rules. Uh, we found out about it because of an FBI investigation. People have uh, paid a heavy price for something similar to what uh, she's done. She should come clean. She should say why she did what she did. Uh, classified information should not be on private servers. In the world we're living in, where she spent most of her time traveling around the world apologizing for the leaks of, that were done by, um, by the Manning episode and the Snowden episode, you know, she should, she should have known that this was completely inappropriate and might be illegal. Finally, sir, you've had a pretty tough summer. Polling averages show you in single digits nationally, single digits in Iowa, single digits in New Hampshire. What happened and how do you turn it around? Turn it around by recognizing it's a long road. Um, we're, we have a well-funded campaign. Uh, next week, I unveil a tax plan that I'm really excited about that, that will create economic opportunity. I'm focusing on how can we lift people out of poverty? How can we give the middle class a pay raise for the first time in 15 years? We have big structural problems in our country, and my focus is on giving people a sense that I have the leadership skills to help them. And over time, I think that'll be an effective message. Governor Bush, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks, George.